success. <laughs> Actually, I like following you with the order and the um, slow process of over and over again, because that's exactly what this work is. It's called the Decanomial Layout, so it's tens. Um, <clears throat> it works with the concepts of multiplication and squaring and cubes. And the students take these bead bars. So this set of bead bars, if you look at your child's blue bag when you go home, there's a triangle on the front of it. And it is this bead bar box, the one single red, two green, three, four, five, and it forms the triangle. They use it as a hanging bead stair in primary and the teens so that the concept of these colors and these quantities they will use for lots and lots of things. So this bead box gets to be very, very important. Um, I moved it down there so they can see That's it better. Right. Um, the, so what we're gonna have the children do is come up with a concept of multiplication. We did not do from one to 10 because it would take many rugs and much time and effort and energy. So what, we're, what we did was just started out what we do. So the kids start with one red, two green, three is pink or whatever color, four yellow, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then they're gonna do one times, here's one, one, two ones, three ones, four ones, and then go here the whole way down the rug till they would get to 10 ones in that corner. And then again, this whole process of order that they've picked up hopefully <laughs> from working here, they then start here. Two, one, two, two twos, three twos, four twos, the whole way down to 10 twos. The rug looks really cool. And they do this over the course of several days. This is not something that they, you know, come in at 9.15 and they're done at 9.25. So over the course of a couple of days, they go through this process till way down there in the corner, they end up with um, 10 tens. So they have one little teeny tiny red bead up here. I think I have 10 tens hiding. Wait, let me see what I have under here. Oops, I don't. Um, <laughs> You didn't see that. But then they'll have 10, 10 bars down in this corner. Then we have a conversation with them. And we say, hmm, let's see. Ta-da. <laughs> like, um, Presto the magician. <laughs> <clears throat> so now we're going to do some fast changing between the parts that are in the, on the first pass, it's called the first pass or iteration and the second. So if you look here, I've now changed two to the two and then um, I've kept twos all in this row. So I've changed it essentially to the two times table, which depending on if they're in um, first year, second year, third year, it will, make sense or won't make sense to them quite yet. But they can see, some of the older students can see, this is two, four, six, eight, blah, 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 20. And then this is three, six, nine, 12, <laughs> and the same thing here. So then we're gonna change it over here. Hmm, one, two, oh, that's three, ha, that's four. And we're gonna change it the whole way down and it's gonna look like this L shape. Whole way across. So you're gonna have converging or nest, nesting L's or boxes of blue, of blue and lavender six, seven, eights, nines, and tens. It's called the um, angular layout. There you go. So the first passage is vertical, the second passage is called the angular layout. And then after we look and make sure that all of the quantities are correct, 
because as I laid this out, I missed one. I missed one of them, which will then throw the entire process off, like the same way here. If they put the short one in, it messes the whole process up. So now we have the angular layout with all the colors, and they can see the pattern again, patterns and recognizing patterns and the shapes in here. What's the next layer called? Um, now you start to construct the deconomial. So we have a conversation <coughs> um, about the change in the layout and what that means. So first we are constructing the multiplication tables to show them physically, hands-on, you know, all the multiplications that we learned and we had to memorize. Now they get to see them laid out in a grid. So the question is, well, how come I'm only laying this many out? and we start to begin to explain to them the very, very basic parts of squaring. So how squaring is created, how you are literally <coughs> constructing squares with the B bars. And then that's where this comes into play as the um, angular construction because then we have this conversation and we talk about how, how are we gonna make these into squares? What does a square have? Okay, it has four equal signs. Well, if I had as you can see with Miss Quinn, I'm join her. Um, I was okay. lonely down here. <laughs> I'd love to sit with you. So um, <coughs> the one um, is kind of a very abstract thing because it, it is itself. There's no way to kind of, in our mind, it's the easy way. A, a one squared is one, one cubed is one. So we kind of have that talk about how cool one is because it doesn't need friends. It, it <laughs> hangs on by itself. So then we look at the twos, and we talk about how we make a square. Okay, we have to make sure there are two beads on each side. So the corner of the angle actually has a perfect square. And then we discuss, do we see that anywhere else? And we do the observation, okay, the threes, it takes three bead bars. And again, it makes the square, the fours, and so forth, all the way down the line. Our next conversation is, well, do you think there might be a way, or it might be natural, naturally intriguing to them. Wait, I can make more squares. I can borrow this one and match it here, and now I have two squares of two. And then we continue through the process. Do you see any more? And they can figure it. Go ahead. I did this one. What? I just did them in this kind of row. So okay. I can oh, sorry. So then you'll look, continue. and they'll go, oh, where are there? where there some more. Oh, I could put these three over here, and that makes a, a thing. And then where's the other one going? Oh, look at this. This can look yeah. over there. And then it's interesting to them that, do we have any leftover pieces? No, we've used them all to create our squares. There aren't extras. So then we continue the process. How can we continue So with where, this? where else is this going to work? If I put this here, which I had been doing, it's just moving it up. But if I put this one here, it doesn't quite make a cube. So it's not this one. But if I have one, where am I going to match this one so that I have four on the side? Well, here. That'll make fours and fours. Mm -hmm. Then I need to get some more fours. Yeah, I have two, so how many would mm -hmm. I need to make four? Oh, this other two. Here, I can reach it. There we go. But then there's one, this odd man out. Oh, but if we match these three, I now end up with the squares. And this is what's good about these rugs that have the, the braided rugs that have this ridge in them. It lets them stay nice and stationary instead of wobbling everywhere. So, Hmm. Then we have what's um, known as the bead cabinet in our room, and if you, if my lovely assistant. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so we trade all these. So now th this wouldn't be visible to them anymore because we would have already transformed this. So this is all gone. They don't see this anymore. Now they have this. Then we look and see, oh, look, I could put the squares from the bead cabinet. So I'm actually trading them for real squares, not loose pieces. So now, and then you do that again for the whole angular layout, the whole way down. 
So you can see how this is an extensive work that takes a period of time. And it's a, you can tell when a student's ready for it. They, they may get part way through and then they're like, <sighs> I mean, they're just like so done. And they can get maybe four or five fake, you know, steps and then they're at the bathroom and getting a drink of water and they're done. So they're just not quite ready for it. Or they may work with a third year student who's doing it for a while and then they kind of meander away. But there's always some point in time when they see this happening that it comes to them like, I might be able to do that. <laughs> in the same way that kids look at this and it's just this mystery and they want to be able to accomplish that. So this is another real level of accomplishment. So now we have a whole bunch of squares on the board. Yeah. Okay. I do like this part. There you go. <coughs> See, then it's a whole lot more impressive than just these little <laughs> ones and twos. <laughs> But so this would be uh, this would be starting here one two three four and that would it would build to that in the far corner, <coughs> huh? At some point, some student in the lesson is going to notice ten hundred squares because they have done exchanging with the golden beads down there that Mrs. <coughs> Real has laying out. They have done exchanging of hundreds, hundred squares, and they know that a hundred square forms a thousand cube. Oh, a cube. And we were talking about cubes and squares, and so you have that conversation about cubes and what's a cube. We do the whole three-dimensional conversation, and then we can build cubes. Not like a like a, a song and dance thing, you know. You explain it to them, and then it's about them doing the work. Like um, Dawn was saying, you know, it's red matches red, black matches black. So this is kind of like form a cube. And then the more they're able to do that, the sense <laughs> of cube makes is perfectly clear all of a sudden. And this thing here that they were well, working with. <laughs> this thing that they were playing with, or the work that they were doing, the puzzle that they were doing, it's a cube. Oh, a cube. And so it isn't just this box or whatever, but it actually has a legitimate name and a reason that it is that name. as fast as my lower oh, no, elementary no, no, hands no, no, no. take See, that's <laughs> what they're supposed to do. I mean, that's the whole thing. We always know when it. someone yeah. is doing this work because everyone is scrounging up all of the colored beads. <laughs> 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 so they will do that, and it will be 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 5, 7, 1. All, the, you know, all those little stacks everywhere. And they'll get down <laughs> to the point where they'll have this like little weenie 2, I mean small 2. Terms. Yeah, and the one, and they can you, then they can physically see one cubed, ten cubed, and it's the the structure of it is obvious. Then, the same way that we replaced the multiplication table with these squares, and then replace the squares with cubes or with stacks of them, we're going to replace the stacks of them with actual cubes. And again, this is many passes and many iterations, and all of this extraneous, lovely material would not be on the rug. <coughs> they would have gone from a rug filled with beads to a rug with this. And then we get to 
looks familiar, like something we learned in primary. What if I were to stack my cubes? And parents, as we're doing this, please look around the room. You may notice something that looks exactly like this, or very similar. Look around the room. I brought it over just to make the print. And then they'll look at this and go, No, I don't know, because I dropped it twice. <laughs> it's okay. You can show it okay, to go There you go. The object is that the smallest cube by the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at you go. Operating left and right. And we will ask, um, you know, primary if we can borrow it and use it lovingly and appropriately. <laughs> there you have And at some point, after, you know, kind of let this all sink in for a while you point out to them, so in primary, you were doing the decanomial cube and you didn't even know it. <laughs> and they're like, what? I mean, you're like, whoa. <coughs> so the idea is that a lot of Montessori materials are, not circular, spiral. So they see, they see things in, at a first grade level and then they see them again at a second grade but it, in a different context and more depth. And then they see them at a third year level. Like this, they see in primary. And then in a completely and awesome way, they get to see this again in upper. So that the material, it's so well thought out. I mean, it all has a purpose, it's not just you know, matching frog, you know, putting four frogs on one log, you know, whatever. Um, so this is the deconomial layout. And we went from the times table to the angular, angular layout. Angular layout. I don't know why that word just doesn't make sense. Angular layout, squares, cubes, and the deconomial, I mean the um, cube tower and then the pink, relating it back to the pink tower that they used in primary. Okay, now we're gonna pass <coughs> to upper elementary to see the new extension of the trinomial cube.